So very good, very, very good morning to all. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, regret that we are starting a, a five minutes delay. Uh, my apologies for this. Uh, this is purely because of a technical reason. I think we are uh, uh, good to go now. Uh, uh, we'll a question, with our president. So may I request all other participants to please go on mute. Uh, a very, very hearty and a very, very warm welcome to our uh, dear uh, Sri D.D. Sadhanand Gauraji, uh, our, our uh, minister uh, for the day. Uh, uh, he's joined us this morning. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, along with him, I have a, a panel of very eminent speakers. Uh, uh, we have Niranjan Hiranandani, uh, the president of ASOCHAM. Uh, thank you so much, president, for your leadership. You have taken ASOCHAM to greater heights. And, and from where you took and where you brought us this now. So it's it's a pleasure to be to be part of your team. I have Jay Sharoff uh, this morning with us. We have Janardhanan uh, joining us this morning and Mr. Adnan. Uh, I also have with me Senior Vice President of ASOCHAM, uh, Vineet Agarwalji, who is also uh, with us at this point in time. Uh, eminent dignitaries in the audience, delegates, government officials, media partners, media, digital and print, uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very warm welcome to all. So this is the first session that we start from uh, for the day, and this is a week-long celebration. So this session has its own huge importance. So thank you for being the first minister in the series of ministers that would come through the week, and the culmination of this week would happen uh, on the Saturday this, uh, this week by uh, Honorable Prime Minister coming and giving the keynote address uh, to all of us. So it, it is uh, indeed a very momentous occasion for ASOCHAM, its leadership, its members and across. So once again, I would like to thank you for, for joining this morning. ASOCHAM has a rich legacy of 100, 101 years and it's that is a testament to the resilience of this country, how we have been able to deal with the highs and lows that we have gone through. Extremely strong fundamentals of this country, supported by strong macros, the pool, the talent, vast talent pool that this country has. I am 100% sure that not only will we emerge from this crisis of COVID, but we will come out with flying colors and we would leave. Uh, the decade is going to be the decade for India. Last year, same time, Honorable Prime Minister had joined us for the similar activity and he went and he had launched the $5 trillion uh, program and he shared his roadmap with all industry. This was happening at Vigyan Bhavan where we had about 70 centers across India which was live and he was talking to all the industry of Asochan. Not that great post, uh, post march, and we found that the world has come to a standstill because of this COVID and the way of working, like you said, the new normal of the digital economy where we are sitting and talking on uh, on e-conferences and so on and so forth. This is the new normal which the world is now going through. But like I said, we will emerge out of this in a very, very large sense. The clarion call of the Prime Minister Atam Nirbhar Bharat is something which is extremely important and will help us to find strength within our own manufacturing. And if I come to manufacturing within the chemical sector, so I think it will be extremely important and we have all the right people over here who will talk to you about the importance of that. And the relevance of the chemical sector is so much so, sir, that this sector is about $160 billion now and we are talking about $300 billion by 2025, which is a substantial jump and the relevance and importance of this sector is, is actually, uh, to my mind, very, very important in the economic growth of this country. So we have uh, the PCPIRs, and I'm sure everybody will talk about the right incentivization that needs to, to be brought in so that we can actually take forward the manufacturing in India, the Atman Nirbharta of India stands strong. And as I close up, I think the mission 5 trillion in plus economy is, is extremely important for this country and this next phase of growth of this economy of this country. So, and, and, and chemical sector will play a very crucial role in this. With this word, sir, I think ASOCHAN stands committed to anything and everything that this sector would need to do to take to the next or leapfrog to the next orbit. And thank you once again for joining us. And with these words, I am now inviting our president, Nanjan Hiranandani ji, to please address us. Thank you. You're on mute. Namaskaram. Sir, it is a great privilege to have you over here today on the first session of our future of manufacturing in India. Your, your ministry 
has actually outperformed and the total concept of the honorable prime minister of atmanirbhar bharat i think the chemical side and fertilizer side of the industry has really performed in a great way so my heartiest personal and aso champs uh, congratulations to you and the entire ministry and the entire industry which are participants here today chemicals have been a very significant part of our overall trade flow consistently making third of our import and a fourth of our exports for the last 5 years the chemical industry has growth potential and has done 8 to 9% in the next decade and has done 6% in the year 2021 i think chemical industry is a great value creator and the concept of atmanirbhar bharat will be fulfilled by the chemical industry in its complete sense our uh, in asocham we have a large number of players within this area and arena and we look forward sir to your guidance in this sector for the purpose of it between 2006 and 2019 the compound annual g growth rate in terms of india's chemical companies was 15% while the world performance was 8%. Of course, we had a lot of backlog to cut off with, but it has done extremely well and hence the performance of the industry needs to be complemented tremendously. We do need your support and guidance because all the chemical industry is a long investment cycle and hence we with our blessings in terms of what the prime minister has given us in the direction will help the industry to support the honorable prime minister's ideas of making the vision of 5 trillion dollar economy happen india has turned around to be a net exporter of chemicals and related products for the first time in the years on in the year 2020 over the past decade export of chemicals and related products have doubled from 20 billion in financial year 11 to 45 billion in the last fiscal outperforming the goods exports that rose from 250 billion to just 313 billion so the chemical and allied industries have really done a wonderful job chemical companies will also benefit from the rising domestic demand so along with the exports the domestic demand in various sectors have also enhanced the attractiveness of this sector now a large number of global oil and gas majors are looking to downstream chemical opportunities and this will definitely increase the focus on petrochemicals in india and we know that even saudi arabia and abu dhabi governments are looking very anxiously to our countries in order to look into this direction global companies are also looking at diversification of the supply chain and reducing dependency on one market and i think this is india's great opportunity the chemical industry has a significant potential of growth provided some of the key factors are focused upon securing feedstock the right product mix and the opportunities are currently very critical for the chemical industry in india we are also looking at huge possibilities of investment in the strategic energy management and strategic water management which will drive sustainability and cost optimization a critical area to be touched upon would be sector skills development program in this sector because the industry has a large opportunity of growth it must be competitive with the rest of the world and this opportunity has been taken careful we have today a very strong panel of industrial leaders on this subject i'm sure the insightful views from the experts will contribute to the initiatives of the government of making india a global manufacturing hub i repeat and reiterate sir that the industry and your ministry has done wonderful work 
We look forward to your support, your guidance, your participation in this sector in order to make the objectives of the Honorable Prime Minister very successful. We are, sir, with you all the time. And we have been having the support of the ministry for ASOCHAM, and we are personally very, very grateful through this. So, Namaskaram to you, sir. All Thank the very, very you. best on a very successful sector. And we are very proud to participate as ASOCHAM with you in all the participation of work done by the ministry and look forward to a huge innings which will make us win all the test matches that we do in the innings towards the five trillion dollar economy so we will all go for it with your support and guidance and look forward to your good wishes to us in asocham in this very important week which will culminate with the honorable prime minister on saturday thank you very much sir thank you president uh, may i may i now request uh... Uh, uh, Jay Shroff, Global CEO of UPL Group, to please address us. Morning, Jay, and please. Uh, 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 thank you very much, uh, uh, Your uh, Honor, uh, Minister. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, uh, thank you, Niranjan, for a very inspirational and insightful view on the chemical industry. It's a real honor uh, to be uh, uh, talking at this uh, meeting. Um, sir, as uh, uh, President uh, Mr. Hirandani uh, said, uh, the chemical industry is a key to every sector today in India. And if we have to have any vision of Atma Nirvata, uh, chemical industry needs to have an exponential growth. Today, every walk of life, from when we wake up in the morning, uh, brush our teeth, have a shower, get into our car, uh, build a new house, uh, uh, textiles, the clothes we wear, everything is related to chemical industry. Today, almost four trillion um, dollars uh, a year is the chemical industry. Uh, you will be uh, uh, surprised to note there are only four major regions in the world which can today uh, dominate the chemical industry, which is U.S., uh, Europe, China. These are the three major players and they control 75 to 80 percent of the industry. The rest of the world is only about 20 percent, and India is, uh, as we said, about 150 billion. So we have an opportunity to at least have uh, 15 percent of that. That makes it in 10 years to be about 750 billion dollar industry. If we are to build a five trillion dollar industry, the chemical industry can really contribute uh, to to the growth and to the uh, independence of uh, India's strategic uh, goals. Uh, today, uh, India is a leader in agrochemicals. We are a leader in pharmaceuticals. We are a leader in so many areas. But uh, we are still dependent on intermediates from uh, our neighbors and from imports. Today, the opportunity for, uh, for us to be able to really scale this industry uh, uh, for the future is uh, critical. It is absolutely critical for us to build this industry, and it will be the, one of the largest, and if not the largest, uh, export earner uh, for us. Uh, we uh, today, even if you want to make a COVID vaccine, it's the chemical industry which will support it. Without that, it's just not possible. As Prime Minister, uh, you uh, benefited uh, India. Uh, India actually uh, benefited through the vision of the Prime Minister to support uh, the whole world with drugs and uh, pharmaceuticals and the future with vaccines. Um, the chemical industry is critical to make sure that, that his vision of India being a supportive uh, and collaborative country becomes uh, 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 a, 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 it's a critical part of that industry. Today, uh, if you look at our pharma industry or agrochemical industry, we are leaders. My company today is leader market leader in 15 countries around the world. Today, we are, uh, 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 pharmaceutical industry is uh, investing in R&D to develop uh, newer and better technology. Uh, so is the agrochemical industry. I believe that uh, uh, the government needs to uh, create a strategic uh, a focus on companies who are doing R&D. The next generation of growth will come through R&D and giving a, a support to R&D uh, and uh, 
uh, all these industries and, and self-sufficiency of key strategic raw materials will drive growth and competitiveness and uh, be able to continue to achieve our dream. So today, uh, there are other aspects which we need to reward and recognize. Um, we need to reward and recognize uh, uh, companies who follow high ESG standards. If you look at the world as the uh, strategic sourcing becomes key and people are looking to India for strategic sourcing, as our president mentioned, there, there is a huge potential and huge opportunity for uh, the industrial, uh, uh, the chemical sector to benefit because people are looking at India as a major source. While we've had a 15% growth rate in the last 15 years in the chemical industry, there is no reason why we cannot have 20, 25% uh, growth in the future, which will enable us to be uh, much, much more stronger. So I would also like to say that uh, companies like UPL, my company, we spend 1,600 crores a year on research and development. So does the pharmaceutical industry. These need to be uh, uh, recognized and we need to be encouraged because that will drive innovation and uh, IP going forward. Today, uh, so the, uh, the whole uh, area of uh, 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 development and our PCPIRs and our infrastructure for the chemical industry, whether it's our uh, uh, competitively produced gas, uh, gas availability, natural gas availability, or any other uh, infrastructure assets need to be invested and we need to create uh, the ease of doing business uh, for our sector. And these are uh, very, very important to encourage uh, investment. Today, to put up a chemical uh, plant, it does take three years by the time you get all your permissions. And we need to have a dedicated uh, focused uh, approval system so that within the PCPIRs and other strategic locations for chemical industry, we can, uh, we can be uh, uh, much faster in our uh, ability to put plants. And, uh, you know, today industry is so much more responsible. Uh, we are uh, setting up uh, centers of excellence for plant safety and health. Uh, and these are critical areas of investment. We also need to, at UPL, we set up uh, a center of excellence where all the industry participates uh, in uh, improving plant safety and health of the workers. Today, we were able to train all the officers of uh, the Gujarat government uh, in that, uh, the safety officers, and they were conducted, uh, the, the, the training program was conducted. And we believe every industry uh, managers and plant managers need to be uh, uh, trained on health and safety uh, and safe operations of plants. And I think small steps in this direction uh, will make a huge difference uh, long term to build a very strong industrial base. And, and this industrial base is not easy to replace because today we have huge amount of chemical industry, uh, chemical colleges, chemical engineering colleges. Our students, uh, the availability of talent is there in India. And there is no point in exporting this talent when we can use, utilize and create jobs in India for them. Uh, so, so this is a very exciting uh, sector. We uh, believe that uh, this sector uh, can really transform the India's export markets and foreign exchange markets. And as we grow, this will be critical for our independence and at Atmam Nirbata. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, presence today and uh, um, uh, wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, very much for that insightful uh, piece uh, on this. I think uh, Minister, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, R&D and IP and how environment is uh, impacting uh, this sector. So I'm sure there are views and things that would be uh, we would love to listen to you as when you talk. And before that, I'm now going to invite Janardharan uh, from SABIC uh, to please uh, share his thoughts with us. Janardharan, over to you. Thank you. Okay, we're having a problem with, with No, Janardhan, we are having an audio issue with you. So maybe you want to log out and log in again. So in the meantime, I will go to Adnan and, and we will have to come back to you. You'll have to sign out and sign in again, please. Uh, so may I request Adnan, uh, who is from Clarion, to please address. 
Thank you. Thank you, Deepak. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, you are. Please. Thank you. OK, lovely. Thank you. So uh, firstly, I want to uh, thank you for inviting me to speak on this uh, this August body. Um, and it's a real pleasure to speak to the Honorable Minister as well. So Namaskar to all of you. Um, so let me just start by talking about India and its position as a global manufacturing hub contender, which was always a given, never a doubt there. And the question was only about the timing. When will we hit the tipping point and really accelerate into a major manufacturing. We are now seeing a very bright future for our speciality chemicals demand uh, in India. I think Mr. Shroff mentioned that as well. Everything in our lives starts and ends with chemicals. The food we eat, the clothes we wear, the books we read, the smartphones we use, the transport we take, everything, everything. And key ingredients in all these will always be speciality chemicals. Canyon Chemicals, the company I, I work for is a, a, a leading specialty chemicals company, which is based in Switzerland and, uh, you know, it uh, operates in countries right across the globe. Very significant uh, presence in India. And um, today we are actually living in a time where the global sentiment is moving away from consuming through supply chains that are predominantly dependent on China. Very clearly. And this is definitely an uh, opportunity for India. Again, as Mr. Shroff mentioned, um, you know, look at the size of the industry globally. India is 3% of the global manufacturing of chemicals and China is 40%. Big opportunity. This opportunity is there. We should ignore the fact that there are many other contenders to replace China. So there's Vietnam, uh, which has been doing well, Thailand doing well, Indonesia. They're all more aggressive right now and very, very uh, um, keen to grab a share of this, this growing uh, industry. And they're also members of RCEP. So that also plays into their favor. But having said that, India has many, many advantages. So uh, that's why so many of us are betting on India. We're confident that India will emerge as a viable op option. So having, uh, you know, myself, I've worked in global organizations all my life. More recently, I've held roles in Europe and, and Asia uh, where we were making exactly these kind of, of decisions. And I believe that, you know, I have a fairly good grasp of what are the decision factors that would be uh, there for taking these decisions and what the hurdles would be. And we should look at both. What are the advantages and, and the challenges? So let's start by looking at what favors us, right? We have a very strong domestic demand. Again, this was mentioned earlier uh, and it's growing and it's gonna to continue to do so for decades. We have a talented and vibrant workforce, uh, which at least for now is giving us labor arbitrage as well. While I don't think that labor arbitrage and cheap labor should be a key factor, I don't think that's what we should look at. But the talent that we have is definitely a key factor, and we have a lot of that. We have a large pool of scientifically trained population that's coming into the workforce every year. This is an extremely valuable asset that India has, and a lot of the other competing uh, economies in Asia would struggle to compete with us in, in this area. And uh, the entrepreneurial spirit of this uh, scientific population has in the past shown tremendous guile and business acumen in the last 30 years or so. And we see it in many successful companies in India, starting by started by bright young chemists and engineers. And on this panel as well with Mr. Shroff's company, that's a prime example, something that all of us in India, in this industry, we are extremely proud of companies like yours, Mr. Shroff. The government is pushing reforms, which is a big advantage for us right now to be in this industry today. And it's looking to make India a more attractive destination for investments. And while the results are not looking to be immediate, uh, the intention clearly sends the right signals uh, going forward. But there are many hurdles for us as well. Feedstock availability is clearly one of them. The infrastructure is poor and that impacts all of us. While it's getting better, and I think it's got in the last decade or so, but we still have a lot of space uh, to cover. Um, you know, we need a, a effective industrial estates comparable to China and, and Singapore, some things that the PCPIR was supposed to, to give us. So we do need to accelerate that. We need a clear policy for the chemical industry, and we have a really good uh, uh, draft policy in place, and it would be great to be able to finalize that draft form um, and, and, you know, adopt it. Um, logistics and energy costs are very high for us in India, um, and, and this is something that we need to deal with and, and tackle. Skill India initiatives need to be more effective. It's a great initiative.
to be able to skill our uh, workforce to make them more ready uh, for our industry. If we look at best practices like Korea, they have 90 to 95 percent uh, of their workforce who are skilled for the chemical industry. With us, we have to teach them once we hire them. So it's probably 5 percent or, or even less. Um, and the other request to the government is not to look at us with uh, suspicion. And I know that there are uh, some issues that we've had in our industry on safety and environmental things, but that that's not representative of the entire industry. Most of us are compliant and we invest a lot of uh, effort and resource in safety and, and in the environment. And we would request you to differentiate between the compliant uh, uh, and those that are the violators. But I think the most important thing that I would like to say is that as the as the industry ourselves, we need to help ourselves by doing a few things wisely. And that's something that we need to do. Um, we need to self-regulate in terms of environment and safety. We need to adapt uh, uh, voluntary certificates like, certificates like the responsible care. We need to sign up to chemical transport initiatives like NYSA Globe. These are things that the industry itself needs to do. We need to bring in technologies of innovation and sustainability. That's absolutely essential for the way forward. We need to make clear commitments on sustainability for scope one, two, and three emissions. Uh, we need to join the SBTI, the uh, um, regulations focusing on, on sustainability. And we need to move from highly manual to more automated processes. So improving quality, improving reliability, safety, really becoming world class. So while many while this may seem a bit counterintuitive because we are trying to see bring in more and more employment, we should focus on uh, the medium term bringing in higher quality jobs, uh, not just jobs, but higher quality jobs, a bit like what has been done in China, what's been done in South Korea and Taiwan in the past. And, you know, we have uh, within Clarion, we've got zero liquid discharge uh, plants. We've got one outside Hyderabad. We've got a world scale pigment plant in Roha, uh, which is also exporting. We've got a. Uh, almost 90% exporting plant of pigments in, in uh, Kadalur, which are highly regarded uh, the world over. And if we can do this successfully, just like a lot of other companies in India are doing, then we should be able to exploit uh, some of the, the businesses that are going to come up for, for grabs uh, when supply chains are moving away from China. And we should be able to double, again, some of the speakers earlier said, we should be able to double the size of the speciality chemicals industry in India for sure. So in conclusion, I just want to reiterate that India is an extremely attractive destination for bringing manufacturing investments. So far, I guess it has been a little bit disappointing in that it's not moved as fast as it should have because we only have 3% of the world's production in chemicals uh, against 40% in China. But herein lies the opportunity as global supply chains move. So I look forward to the next decade for our industry. For those youngsters who are coming into this industry today, it's a golden opportunity for them. They'll have a great career in this industry. Um, and I will see, uh, I, I hope to see India starting to reassert itself in the space of manufacturing, especially in chemicals. Thank you, and Jai Hind. Thank you, thank you, Adnan. I think uh, very well said, self-regulation, compliances, safety, as any other industry is as important or more in this. And I'm sure industry needs to do a lot and lot and people need, they need to differentiate between the violators and the, the right people. Uh, may I now request Janard uh, I hope uh, we have the uh, technical glitch sorted and over to you, please. Can you hear me now? Loud Can and clear. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all of you and uh, uh, it's a great pleasure to be part of the ASACAM uh, uh, conference and uh, speak on manufacturing in India and becoming a global community. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, sincere appreciation to Honorable uh, Cabinet Minister, Mr. Sadananda Gaudaji, Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers, uh, Mr. Nir uh, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, Mr. Vinita Garwal, Mr. Sood, fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, among the audience. Uh, I, I want to start by saying uh, an old known fact, but many of us probably forget it. India was a manufacturing hub before Industrial Revolution One. So it is not, it's just that, you know, in the last three, 400 years, we are trying to go back to where we were uh, to before the Industrial Revolution One, where India was known for its textiles and jewelry around the world. And Indians are big exporters at that time. Uh, for manufacturing to be competitive domestically as well as to become a global hub, 
the, the reforms what our government has done in the last few years have actually laid a very strong foundation. And I just want to pick few of them and then put them in the context that uh, what is there in our foundation to become a global competitive manufacturing hub. We all know that you know the ease of doing business, we jumped from 142 to 63 in the last six, seven years. Uh, what is not spoken about loudly in our manufacturing circles, but the corporate direct tax, income tax, going down from 35 to 25% uh, since last financial year has been a big help. And on top of it, an incentive for new investments with an effective tax rate of 17% is highly competitive in the global context. Uh, China is in the range of 15 to 17%, and that was always a kind of a competitive threat for us, but I think we are there offering this in the next five years, uh, effective tax rate of 17% for new investments. The new labor code, we have always talked about India's challenges in manufacturing, being, labor being one of the factors. The new labor, labor codes are addressing substantial part of it. And then when the states implement it, it I think the labor code will, will take us to a competitive labor market in the world. I want to also talk, mention that you know power used to be a discussion you know, amongst our panels 10 years ago, but today the power costs in India, the solar power costs are not reaching two rupees 25 paise per unit. And we are competitive in that sense. There is surplus in many of the manufacturing states like Gujarat, you can even trade them. So I think you know, like as a factor of manufacturing, power be, from being a handicap is actually now becoming an aid to manufacturing. Uh, talking about to become a global hub, you need infrastructure and solid infrastructure, ports and airports, privatization of many of this. India's 7,000 kilometer coastline is a huge advantage to move material in and out of our country uh, to become a global competitively manufacturing hub. We all know this government has done a good job in the last few years in managing our inflation. The capital costs have been drifting slowly down now. Uh, what used to be an industrial cost of capital of 14% in India is now reaching 10 and below 10 for those who are good trading. There is the topic of talent which is needed and our skill development initiatives in the last five years is already preparing our baseline manufacturing talent uh, for a global role. It's not just more of meeting our own needs, but I think that's something in you know, a significant amount of funds including CSR funds from corporates are going in this direction and developing skill, which is not only needed for our own domestic uh, need of manufacturing. The most recent one of the part of the reform steps, the production linked incentive, I think this is a great step because most of the manufacturing is, in, is focused towards domestic market. They are satisfied meeting the domestic market. But with the production linked incentive, many of them can hope to now leapfrog into exports. Uh, because first of all, a marginal costing and additional capacity and an incentive from the government gives a very strong foundation to boost exports in the coming years. But lastly, again, this is part of the entire manufacturing process. We always talk of entry into business, but exits are very difficult. Our government's reforms in the insolvent, insolvency and bankruptcy code is a keystone actually, because not all businesses will be successful. There will be some which will fail. And there needs to be a decent and honorable exit for businesses which are failing. So this package of all of these reforms from our government actually has put a solid foundation for us to leapfrog into becoming a global manufacturing hub. By sheer strength of what we have done, not, not some misfortune in trade circles of other countries, but by our own capabilities. Looking at where the future of manufacturing is going to be to start with in a very broad sense, then I'll come at the end to the chemical industry, is that we industrial revolution four and all the key ingredients for that, you know, be it our uh, uh, bandwidth, our uh, depth of penetration of internet into this country, which provides artificial data, big data, precision manufacturing skills. All of this is actually, you know, like foundationally available in the country to go and embrace the industrial revolution four, because you need to be embracing industrial revolution four to become a globally competitive manufacturing hub. And coupled with that, I think our prime minister's ambition in COP21 of our nationally determined limits puts a very strong emphasis on our sustainability and circular economy, which are important for our export markets as much as they are important for our own domestic uh, people. 
So this whole package of our reforms for the Industrial Revolution 4, for the sustainability where the country wants to go with the renewables as well as the emission limits, I think we have a perfect mix of all the ingredients uh, waiting to take India into the next manufacturing giant in the world. Coming to the one more step, you know, I would like to introduce that we already have seen examples that uh, India as a country is great in service industry. The IT industry is operating in nooks and corners of the world. We need to adapt as a country to consider manufacturing as a service too. Because there are many areas where we don't own patent rights, we don't own the technology, neither can we invest. Mobile phones, for instance. This would be manufacturing as a service concept creates a lot of jobs. Uh, many of us need, will know that you know China itself is actually following this manufacturing as a service in a very large extent. They no, import no, 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 2.5 trillion. No, no, no. Yeah, um, uh, so job creation, open to imports for exports for this kind of a thing and be part of the global value chain. We need to be part of, even if it's a small part, we need to be part of the global value chain. Coming to the chemical industry, very briefly to summarize and finish my speech, I think there is a great perspective plan in the making under our uh, leadership of our Honorable Minister. Uh, there is steps taken for chemical safety management. There are implementation of standards uh, for the first time in our country for the chemical industry, which is being implemented. Uh, the talent in India for research and development in chemical industry is well known with all global majors having research in India and the niche we have. And finally, as a summarizing fact, the PCPAR concept has providing, is going to provide enough land, because land is going to be an issue for chemical industry. For the next 40, 50 years, as I can see, that's a great platform. Yeah, even though you know it, the original scope of PCPAR did not fructify in the same way, but what this industry has is already in place. Land is going to be one of the challenges of the chemical industry. And that is already made available. And we have proven as an industry, as Dr. Hiranandani said, as a net exporter for the first time under the able leadership of our minister. And the future is in the same direction. We will only remain a net exporter and more and more. And we will contribute as an industry to 25% of the GDP. Thank you so uh, much. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that uh, address. Um, uh, I'm now going to request uh, uh, our Honorable Minister, Mr. D.V. Uh, Sadhan Goda, please to address us. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, good morning to all of you. Because nothing is left out at the this juncture, because uh, all the speakers, they have spoke extremely well how we are gearing up, how the government is supporting the whole industry, how SOHM is taking its responsibility in the right direction to keep everything in a smooth movement. I really congratulate, uh, at the very outset, I really congratulate the SOHM for commemorating its journey of a century of this year. Century, uh, uh, you are celebrating uh, it uh, at the Foundation Day week celebrations you are going to do. I think that certainly there will be a major issues wherein what are the advantages, what are the challenges, what are the new initiations that we have to take, how we should go ahead, how the initiations taken by the government has to be taken forward by the whole industry. I think SHM is doing a right job. And as a minister, wholeheartedly I congratulate our uh, uh, Deepak Sudji, Niranjan Hirandanji, and uh, his, their team for doing this wonderful job. And certainly, I will assure you, whatever suggestions, whatever new initiations that the government need to take, as per your vision, certainly it will be taken forward by us to the best of our ability. You know very well our Honorable Prime Minister, his vision and uh, the steps taken since last four, five, six years has certainly gave us, uh, in the beginning itself, our uh, Niranjanji told uh, that, yes, we are going to win the test match. Certainly, I would make a small comment 
that during this COVID, uh, when the COVID uh, uh, crisis struck, we have shown that how 2020 we can win. Certainly, I hope that that period has shown to the whole world that India, from zero, it can rise to 100 within the days to come. And I hope that SOHM will certainly boost for all these initiations. Once again, I thank the whole team for uh, celebrating uh, its Foundation Day Week 2020. Uh, and you will come up with new ideas which uh, this uh, industry need to take care of. Uh, Sarah, I can tell you from, the, from my experience uh, in pharma sector, I'm holding the uh, pharma sector also comes under my ministry. When COVID crisis st struck initially, India was dependent upon the imports uh, for PPE kits, masks, and even ventilators. We, go, we are solely dependent upon all these things. But India became one of the largest manufacturer of PPE kits, N95 masks, and even uh, we are manufacturing more than 5 lakh kits and 3 lakh masks every day, and even more than 3 lakh uh, units of uh, ventilators uh, in a, a per annum. All this shows that from zero, how we could able to go ahead. The initiations taken by the government, the support given by the industry, and the institutions like SHM, which could push the whole system that has shown to the whole world, yes, India is one of the uh, countries they will be leading in this uh, sector in the coming days. The government uh, is under the visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Shri Modi ji has taken several measures. All those things have been uh, just now told by Janardhan ji and other uh, persons who spoke just now. Um, and uh, it has boosted the competitiveness uh, of the manufacturing sector. Uh, I would like to mention a few initiations taken by the government uh, that uh, the brand Make in India uh, concept, the popularization of this has uh, uh, given a push to our whole uh, industry, setting up uh, Invest, Invest India under the Department of Commerce to provide single window facilitation services, ease of uh, easing of FTI uh, rules to allow new sectors under uh, automatic route, introduction of uh, simplified and uniform single indirect system, that is GST uh, system, reduction uh, in corporate tax, you know, uh, it has been reduced to 22%. Even uh, the corporate income tax, uh, up to 15% for the units to make fresh investment till March 31st, 2023, introduction of uh, um, uh, insolvency and bank of the code, to allow easy, easy uh, and early exit, even uh, as rightly said by Janardhan, the new labor code that has given him push for uh, whole, uh, our industry, simplifying regulatory regimes and uh, expediting uh, approvals across the sectors, uh, building and improving the condition of highways, roads, ports, airports, electrification, etc. Uh, and uh, 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 further, the central government has chalked out a plan uh, to attract investment of about uh, 111 lakh crores, that is nearly 1.5 uh, US dollar, dollars on infrastructure in the next five years, announcement and implementation of special economic package worth rupees 20 lakh crores to provide relief against uh, uh, disruption due to corona pandemic. These are the initiations taken by the government, uh, thereby uh, giving a big push uh, to the whole industry. As the result of this proactive uh, and business-friendly approach, uh, the government of India has done extremely well in uh, consecutive years of doing business, at, as rightly said by the speakers. Our uh, ranking has improved uh, in 63, to 63 in 2019 from 142 in 2014, a big jump. Even the FDI flows, uh, that is the FDI flows in 2018-19, uh, 
uh, it was 73 billion dollar um, um, it is up by 18 percent from the previous year uh, as far as the chemical and petrochemical sector is concerned uh, the industry played a significant role in both industrial and economic growth by providing raw materials and inputs to almost all sectors of economy in 2018 the size of the sector was uh, 163 billion us dollar and contributes about 13.4 percent of manufacturing gva 2.4 percent of national gva and uh, employs about 2 million people uh, the uh, last uh, one and a half year, uh, decade the indian chemical industry has transformed from manufacturing principal chemicals uh, in a highly regulated market to bring a, a mature industry in liberalized economy majority of the chemicals uh, produced in india uh, comprise either upstream products or intermediates which go into variety of manufacturing applications including fertilizers pharmaceuticals pharmaceuticals textiles and plastics agrochemicals paints and dyes the end use industries like automotive elect electronics package packaged food textile etc all are driving indian uh, especially chemical industry strongly domestic demand coupled with the huge investment by domestic and foreign players is making the industry uh, scale new heights uh, i am told that the chemical sector has uh, a network of 200 national laboratories about 1300 research and development uh, uh, centers which provide a strong base to become innovation oriented shifting focus towards research and development would also facilitate growing opportunities which could uh, profile indian chemical industry to become global manufacturing hub and penetrate global value chain some factors which are contributing growth of chemical and petrochemical sector in the country are raising disposable income uh, medium age of population urbanization and uh, uh, growing penetration and demand from rural markets. In addition, uh, as production and consumption shift towards Asian and uh, Southeast Asian countries, the demand for chemicals and petrochemicals is expected to raise uh, to grow at 9% per annum, much faster than expected GDP growth rate to reach 300 billion US dollar by 2025. As far as chemical and petrochemical uh, sector is concerned, successive governments have taken several initiatives such as uh, removed license, licensing requirements except for uh, hazardous chemicals uh, and a few special drugs. Uh, entrepreneurs, are, uh, entrepreneurs are allowed to set up chemical industries following industrial entrepreneurs memorandum route under the automatic route 100% FDI is allowed for all chemicals except the hazardous uh, ones. Uh, the peak rate of customs duty on most chemicals has been brought down uh, to 7.5 percent. Petroleum and uh, chemical uh, petrochemical investment regions policy has been introduced to boost the development of chemical and petrochemical investment regions. I certainly believe that the uh, Indian chemical and petrochemical sector holds uh, potential to emerge as global manufacturing hub. We are aware of the need to support cluster-based uh, development of the sector through provision of world-class infrastructure and uh, logistics and department is working on it. The sector has great opportunity to leverage on its talent pool and resources to attain a successful position in world market in addition india has been increasing its export of chemical products in recent years so growth will also be a factor to burn and exports india's long-term growth scenario supported by strong uh, macro fundamental uh, boards uh, well uh, for chemical manufacturing companies i don't want to take much of your time 
I would like to conclude once again by congratulating the SHM for its foundation week and also for taking up issues related to chemical sector, which has far reaching implication for manufacturing led growth in the country. Uh, uh, certainly, the whole team of SHM is doing a wonderful job uh, by uh, interacting, deliberating, and discussing and giving new ideas uh, in the development of this sector. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you for your address, uh, Honorable Minister. It is really truly an honor. And as as always, we we, uh, we get all the attention and support from you and your uh, from your ministry. So thank you very much for always being there for the sector. May I now invite uh, Vinita Agarwalji, the senior vice president. He takes over as a president uh, post this week uh, to to share his thoughts and also uh, conclude the session, please, Vinita. Thank you, Deepaji. Thank you for the pleasure to propose a vote of thanks to Honorable Shri D.V. Sadhanan Gaudaji, who is the Honorable Minister for Chemical Fertilizer. Uh, sir, it has been a pleasure to listen to you and understand how the, the plans that you have put in place pre-COVID and now post-COVID with all the areas in terms of developing this sector. This is definitely a sunrise sector and uh, one sector that can really, really transform uh, India into a real global manufacturing hub. Uh, as we just heard that it is only India contributes only 3% of the global manufacturing. Uh, so clearly there's a huge potential in it. And uh, so I come from the logistics industry and I'm seeing uh, our own business in the chemical side also just exponentially increasing with the kind of demand that we are seeing in the market. So uh, clearly this is something that is uh, very obvious. It has started to happen. Uh, and the replacements uh, from China as an alternative destination is happening right now. So I think in terms of the, the path that uh, has been laid down by the Honorable Prime Minister and certainly by your ministry, we are seeing really good results out of it. So we are committed as an organization to support not just the chemical fertilizer, agrochemical industry, uh, as well as the entire industry, to ensure that in the next few years, we are amongst the top few countries of the world in chemical uh, chemical industry. Uh, thank you again, sir, and thank you to all the participants to join us today. Please do keep uh, joining our other sessions as we uh, go through the week. Uh, we have some very other... Uh... We need to we just lost you. So, uh, thank you very much for all, all the particip uh, participants. Uh, uh, for, for We have a complete week. We have your email IDs. We will keep sharing with you each and every detail about every session uh, as we go along. We look forward to seeing you there. Uh, just just uh, bring it back. Thank you very much.